Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So today in this particular video, I am going to share with you some very interesting application of time travel feature what you can utilize if you are using Delta Lake or maybe you are using Snowflake as cloud data warehouse platform because in both of these platform time travel is supported, right? And this is an important interview question as well that what is the application of time travel so most of the time we reply as restoring data related objects that can be tables schemas or databases that might have been accidentally or intentionally deleted or updated right suppose you try to execute some delete command to delete some specific rows but while executing the command you might have forgot to apply the where clause as a result the whole table data got deleted by mistake right or maybe you are applying some update query to update some specific rows and there you might have given long where clause and due to which huge number of rows got impacted so to roll back these kind of accidental deletes or update generally we can take help of time travel feature so this is a very good use case everything is fine with this but time travel can help us in other ways also and what are those use cases on that i am going to share with you few examples in this video tutorial okay so first example what we are going to explore is application of time travel in time series data analytics. So for this demo let me first create a fresh table. So I am dropping the table if it is existing and here I am going to create a table which will contain user sign up details. Okay that is user ID, name, email ID, sign up source whether the user tried to sign up using mobile or website etc. And when this event was generated like that timestamp related information will be stored in this table and I am going to create this table with delta format okay which is default format for our data bricks tables. So here it already exists. I'm not sure whether the drop comment got executed or not, but I'll execute it again. So yeah, the table got created. And now what we'll do initially, we will have some insert query, which will insert three dummy user sign up activities in our table. So now if you query your customer sign up details table, here you will able to see this kind of data, whatever we have ingested. Okay. And suppose the business team is asking you to do some analytics on top of this particular table that is in between past week and this week, how many new user has signed up that we need to calculate, right? So one traditional approach what we can follow is basically from the created at timestamp extract the week part and then you apply some sort of aggregation or window operation to get the idea that how many new users has signed up this week, right? But without using this timestamp column also, we can do in other way using the time travel feature. So that let me show you. So already these users have signed up. Okay, here you can see the time is 8.14 on 19th of April. And now here I'll be keeping a store that what is the current timestamp. Okay, so this query will return the current timestamp that is 8.15. By 8.14 all the users have signed up and current time is 8.15 and after 8.15 what happened that some new user suppose they have signed up okay. So here I am executing again some insert queries and two new rows are inserted in our table and now if I do see let's start from our sign up table here we will able to see total five rows three who signed up before 8.15 and two after 8.15. So here you can see these three users who signed up at 8.14 and these two new user who signed up at 816 right as simple as that so in this case we are having same day data but you can consider in your real world projects you will be having weekly data monthly data or yearly data as well available in this delta table right and now suppose you got the assignment that past week or past month how many new users have signed up if the business team is asking this kind of data then obviously this kind of column may help us but suppose this column is not there then to get this incremental change that is last week how many new users got signed up or etc to do this you can take help of time travel feature and that how you can do so obviously if you recall our time travel feature normal concept that is select start from table and any past date if you want to query you need to provide timestamp as of so suppose i want to get when the timestamp was this much that is 815 then how many users were there right suppose that you want to get you can just put that timestamp and execute this query 
and here you will be getting these three users were there. So this way we basically traveled back to past. This is not the current state of table. As of this specific timestamp, how many users were there that it is giving us the idea, right? And now suppose you want to understand that how many users newly logged in compared to this specific timestamp to get that idea you can execute this kind of query. So let me just paste the timestamp and then let me explain you what this query is doing. So select count of distinct user ID from customer sign up table that will basically give us current count of unique users who have signed up and suppose I want to know how many new users signed up compared to this specific timestamp. So what we need to do? We need to get count of distinct user ID as of this state. So the inner query is doing that. Select count of distinct user ID from the same table, but we are basically getting this count as of this timestamp. Okay, and we are subtracting this to result. That way we can easily get that how many new users signed up starting from this specific timestamp and it will return outcome as two. Because after 8.15, two new users were added in our table, right? So this way, time series analytics you can easily perform with help of time travel feature. I hope you are getting the intuition that last week how many users has onboarded or last month how many users has on onboarded if you want to get. Obviously, you, in the current table you are having sign up details as of this month. You can travel back one month past and with respect to that data you can easily compare. So in this kind of time series analytics, time travel feature can be very useful. Okay, apart from that, time travel feature can also help you in low cost comparison between previous version of data and the current state of data, which is pretty much understandable from this example itself, right? Now you can utilize this feature in some other way also, that is incremental data processing. So here I have written some notes which basically shows how in general incremental data processing happens. That is suppose here we are having some OLTP source table and we are creating some data warehouse which is OLAP system, target table which is sitting in some cloud data warehouse platform like Snowflake, right? Now in day zero, suppose we are having two rows who are having date as of 18th April, right? So as part of first day load, we extract full data from our source table and we ingest in target table. So in target table also we'll have the same data two records of 18th April, right? Now in the source next day on 19th April, one new row got inserted. Now I need to incrementally process the data from source to target. So that time we generally execute this kind of query. That is insert into target table. These are the columns where we need to insert the data in target table. And we will select same set of columns from the source table, but not complete data will be inserting in target table, right? we need to only insert the incremental data whatever is already not available in target table. So how to do that? For that we execute this kind of query. So select these columns from source table where date in the source table is greater than select max date from target table. So in our target table max date is 18th April. So I want to get only those data points from source table who are having date greater than 18th April. That means 19th April data will be inserted in our target table in an incremental fashion using our ETL process, right? So this is how generally we perform incremental load. But suppose at some point of time, you are getting some assignment where in the source table, this date column is not there, okay? That time you cannot apply this logic, but suppose your source system support time travel. So that time you can take help of time travel to detect the incremental data like here we can easily do right that is suppose this is our source table so I want to get whatever data got changed with respect to earlier run so that time what we can do select star from current source table except select star from source table and we want to get only the changed data starting from the specific timestamp suppose that timestamp is our last runtime of ETL load so if we execute this one, we can easily get starting from our last run, how many new rows got inserted in our source table. And these rows alone, we can basically transform or ingest to some target system that can be Snowflake or something else, right? So this way in incremental data processing also or in change data processing also, time travel feature can help us. So these are few less used scenarios where time travel feature can help us 
to solve specific business problem this is what i wanted to cover the same notebook i'll be providing in the description box so that you can play with it experiment with it and understand in a better way this is all for my this video if you find this video helpful then please like share and comment subscribe our channel if you have not subscribed till now and don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our latest videos thank you for watching